Hello. How do I find dividend stock? So I'm going to share with you how you can find dividend stocks if you have an account with Charles Schwab. I have taught my children a similar way to locate stock, but they use Google and they just search it. But I'm, the way I'm going to teach you, we are going to use the same filters, but we are going to use Charles Schwab account. So if you have Charles Schwab account, you will enter your login information to log in. If you do not have an account, you want to create an account with them, you will create open account and go through the process. You can, if at any point you have question, you should be able to, excuse me, contact them as well. We can talk more about Charles Schwab later, but once you have your account, you log in, you will go to research. In the top bar, you will click on research, and in the drop down menu, you will click on US markets. And in the under US market, I don't know the view that you will have. They changed their view recently, like I'm talking about the layout of things. So if you have the new view, you may not see what we are looking for right away. So I have both options. So I will click on return to classic view. And under classic view, we will scroll down and we will click on industries. And it will show us the different sectors that they have in the stock market. So you scroll down and you will see the sectors in the market. And I will suggest you have a, an investment spreadsheet to write down the different sectors. And I'm going to show you an example. So you will write down the industry, the sectors, and in under each sector they have the industries, and some of them have sub industries as well. So what we are trying to do is go through each one of those sectors, go through each sub industry each industries and go through each sub industries and retrieve retrieve uh, high pay dividend stocks record them on our spreadsheets and then later apply other filters to way to highlight the good one that we want to invest in and then over time, as you have money, you can invest in those stocks when they are on the low side. So I have taught my children a different approach because they don't have access to their brokerage account. So they go to Google. The way I taught them may not be the way they are doing it now because they do things their own ways. But they go to Google and they just go through the search bar and tap dividend stock and I told them to if they like let to start with something they know about if they like sto uh, toys to say dividend they, they can say a toys company to toys public companies they type it and it will show them you know those companies and then they can go through each one of them to see which one has dividend and then go from there and then they apply few filters that I taught them to to see if they are on the low side or on the high side to pay attention to the 52 weeks low or the 52 weeks high 
and if it's on the low side, the, the company pay dividend they, to check the year the company went public. And if the company, if that's good, then they share that discovery with me. And if that's a good company, I'll tell them to write them down in their notebook and I will evaluate later. But they do that on, uh, often. But the process that I'm going to teach you is to go through it by bulk to retrieve the dividend stock, have them in your spreadsheet, and then as you have money to invest, you will see which one is uh, close to its low price, its lowest price of the year, and invest in. So there is multiple filter will apply, but it just allows you not to go back and search those dividend stock over and over and again. You just do the work and by having the sector, the industries and the sub-industries and going through them, you know that you are not missing an industry or a sector. So we are going to use an example here. So we are going to click on communication service sector. He said he has, let me see if I can make this screen a little bit bigger. Um, okay. So he said he has 655 companies. So I think it's a little bit too big here. Okay, so we click on communication service. So when you look underneath it, they have sub-industries. And so the setup is communications. So they have sub industry they have industries underneath it. So industries in the communication service sector. So they have five of them. So we are going to click on Diversified Telecommunication Service. They say it has 51 companies. So we'll click on that. And under that, we could have the companies or sub-industries. And as you can see, we have sub-industries. So sub-industries in the Diversified Telecommunication Service industry. And when you go on, you can see it here, it's telling you the market. That's the SP500 market we are in. It's telling you the sector that we click on. It's telling you the industry we are in. And we have the sub-industries open. So we are going to click on the first one. That's why you might keep track of what you are doing because uh, the industry has multiple the sector has multiple industries in it, and we click on the first one. And this, this, the first industry has two sub industries in it. So we click on alternative carriers. It has 15 companies. So when you click on that sub industry, it will show you the companies that are there. So you can see the routes, all sector, communication sector, the industry is diversified telecommunication service and the sub-industry is alternative carrier. And they try to show you the chart, but we are not paying attention to that. It's comparing that in sub-industry to the SP500, all the companies in the SP500. So you scroll down, to the list of the companies. They say it has 15 companies, if I believe. So you notice that here is showing you the performance. We are not going to pay attention to that. Even showing the market capitalization, we are not going to pay attention to that. What I like to do is click on valuation. When you do that, it's going to show you the companies with um, some of the valuation including the dividend yield because i want to filter them by dividend rate i like to click on valuation to have the the um the valuation that has the dividend rates in it so you because it's now 
from the least to the highest uh, to the highest to the lowest dividend rate. You click on dividend yield. yield. When you do that, it's going to store it off for you. So you are going to see from the highest to the lowest. Unless you click on again, it's going to do from the lowest to the highest. So we are going to click and it's going to do it from the highest to the lowest. And so far, we can just see we have only out of those 15 companies, only two pay dividends. So um, we use the first filter, dividend uh, evaluation. So to filter the companies to see the one that pay dividend. So you are you might want to set the dividend yield that you are looking for. So that now that will bring the question: What is the right dividend um, yield, or what is the best dividend yield? I think it is subjective. As you go through this, you see dividend dif different type of rates, and you might reevaluate your options but let me explain a little bit what we are trying to do here is if you are trying to create a stream of income through dividend stocks that's what i'm trying to talk about i know that there are many uh, um, investors that will advise against uh, investing in dividend stock and maybe we can go through those at the uh, later so that's yeah let's go through all of that later but anyway so you have to set a, a dividend rate in mind so that anything above that is what you are looking for so this first filter is filter the stocks to see the one that offer high dividend now the second filter is go through read the company's name to eliminate any partnership ltd llc partners those things at the end of the company name don't consider them eliminate those so we have lumen technology inc that's a corporation co inc those ending those ending of a company's name means a corporation. So 19.16%. I will suggest you write the company's name, the, the, the company's the stock symbol, and the price. Can this one just open just close it? Usually it should have something on top for you to close it the price that is selling now $5.22 and the dividend yield put those things on your pay on your stockment <laughs> on your investment uh, spreadsheet so let's see if i have a woman here so l u m n i believe uh, Okay, so let me close this and let me hide this colon. Okay, so you will enter the company's name, the the um, the symbol, the price. At the time you are looking at it, when I did it back in March, it was ten dollar fifty five. Now it's even lower, five dollars, it likes a half. And back then it was the dividend I recorded. So it's all those things will change, but it's going to help you do your analysis and then the communication, the sector, the industry the sub-industries. So those, yeah. So at this point, at this stage, you will enter those information on your spreadsheet. You may not um, put the market yet, unless that little things that open up, opens for you, you can put the market. 
and then you close that out here. So the second one is it, it end with INC as well. And 5.41, I think that's good dividend to go with. Therefore, we will record it as well. And uh, just what we like to read those companies so you can see some reading going on. And I'm sure it will be good. But it does not have a dividend. Therefore, I'm not going to add it to my my list because I'm recording dividend stock. So there is different way to invest to invest in the stock market. You can invest in index in uh, index. You can invest in ETFs. You can invest in individual stocks. You can invest in dividend stocks, stocks that pay dividend, or you can choose to invest in dividend that do in stocks that do not pay dividends and a lot of tech stocks may not pay dividend growth stocks usually they don't pay dividend because they are still at the growing stage and you can accumulate equity in those stocks but you have to sell it to access that gain otherwise you have unrealized gain but when you don't sell it, you do not access that gain. But when you invest in dividend stock, you don't need to sell your stock to access uh, some stream of income out of it. So that's the goal here. If you want to invest in dividend stock so that you can create a stream of income from stock investment, that's Dividend stock is a good way of doing that. You do not need to sell your stocks. And when eco the economy is down, you are not going to worry about selling your stock at, at a loss to access your money. You will have your stream of dividend income coming in for you while your stock is still there, even if it's down. When the market goes up, they are going to go up again. So you are going to have these streams of income without selling your stock. You just need to check off the reinvestment that you have set up to reinvest the dividend. You just check it off and your brokerage firm, in this case, just swap will just put the dividends that the company pays you, put it in your account in cash version. So we are trying to create teaching how to you are trying to teach how you can create a streams of income by investing in dividend stock keep in mind that dividend stock is taxable if you are doing it in a brokerage account and that's what i will suggest as well but you can do it in a rough account when you are creating an account with charge swap you can create both rough ira if you have a job you can create rough ira and then you can create brokerage account as well you can invest in both but i set a goal to create a stream of income through stock investment and i wanted to do that in brokerage accounts and i would say it's against a lot of advice financial advisor will give you for a few reasons one reason is when you trade stock in the brokerage account your gain if you sell stock they gain the profits that you have let's say you buy at five dollars you sell it at ten dollars that five dollars profit is taxable to you it will go on your 1040. if you invest in dividend stocks in your brokerage account if you do not sell the stock but this the stock is generating dividend for you even if you decided to reinvest that dividend in back in the company to buy more share, you are going to pay tax when you file 10, your 10 for you are going to pay tax on those dividends. Your brokerage firm will send you a form, 1099 form that you will use to report those dividends on your 10 for it. So you'll pay tax on those dividends, whether you 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 took it or reinvest it back in the company. And Many investors that do, do not want or that wants to pay um, less tax as possible will avoid those routes. And many my advice is better you invest in a rough IRA. And investing in, in rough IRA is great. 
But again, IRS will tell you when you spend that money. You have at your retirement age, you have a minimum age you have to reach before you can access your Roth IRA account money and use it. And the Roth IRA, what you invest in, is after tax and it will generate profit, dividend, it will increase the stocks and it will increase in value when you sell it. You are not going to pay tax on those profits or those gains or those dividends in your Roth if you you start taking money out of it after the threshold age that they set. If you want to access your Roth before that age that they set, you can take your capital out without touching the profits. But again, you have to file a task form when you file your 1040 to prove that you didn't touch your, your the profit, but only your capital. And you can do that if you have that account open with, um, for five years, you can touch your principal. You can take it out without touching the profits, without a penalty. But you need to file a form, a task form, to prove what you took out. That is now, you know, the, that is your principal and not the profit, you know. So there is a requirement you have to meet so that to avoid penalty. So that's, I have a rough IRAs, but I'm, um, chose to create streams of income investing in dividend stock in brokerage account and the reason is those rough IRAs, those 401ks, those IRA accounts they are made, they are designed in a way that you spend the money in there all the way to zero so you touch your capital. And I'm trying to create a, 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 a stream of income where I do not touch my principal, but I have that principal generating stream of income for me. Therefore, I want to do that in a brokerage account, even if I'm aware that I'm going to pay tax on those dividends every year. So, but again, IRS is not going to tell me when I can touch my money and when I should not touch it. It is mine. And that's the price to pay for my freedom, for my independence, for my financial independence. So I'm trying to generate a stream of income where I do not depend on my employer to provide for my need. So if that is your goal, then you might want to think about it and see if you want to do it in the Roth IRA or doing it in the brokerage account. When you are putting money in the Roth IRA, you are putting it there that when you retire, you are, you are going to spend it. When you are doing it in your brokerage account, you can touch it any time you want. So having the money in the brokerage account and investing in the brokerage account, even though you are going to pay tax on it on the dividend every month every year well that money is there that if you want to have the dividend pay in as cash not reinvested you have that stream that you can rely on as a stream of income so we are going to come back to that analogy so for that reason you have to set your goal very well and see how you can proceed to reach that to see the result and see how you want to improve the if you do not attend the goal you expect so and again investing in the stock market is a long process so it has to take you years to actually see the result how the result you know it's how it is so and you can speculate as well. There is another, that is another form of dealing with stock. It's not investing, it's speculating, it's trading. So you buy low, when it goes high, you sell it and you make a profit. So there are stocks like that. And for those stocks, you don't need them to pay dividend. So, but so that, so that's why you have to be very intentional about the type of stocks. I have noticed that when I purchase stocks with the intention of selling and when it goes up, I don't sell it. 
on time, you know, I tend to hold on to it and leave it in the account. Therefore, I would say I'm more of an investor. My husband, that it took me a while to convince to invest in the stock market, I would say he likes to trade. So, as uh, in the past, we have used our Roth IRA for those. And so, you have to, you know, know your tendency to see which form of investment or trading is good for you. So, both ways you are going to make money. When you are trading stock, you will be active on it. You will be checking your account often and you will be making decisions. And the way you evaluate the stock will be different. And you will make money by trading stock because it's active. You buy low when it goes high. You sell it, you make profit right away and you use that money to invest in something else. And according to those traders, uh, traders they will advise that when you purchase a stock, you want to hold on to it and sell it. Like within three months, you have to be able to sell that stock for a profit. If you go past six months, you didn't sell it, you are not trading, you are investing. So those in traders, they like to, you know, uh, trade that stock within the first three at the later six months pull their money with a big profit and reinvest it again in something else. So, but we are not going with that in mind just yet. Therefore, this one without dividend, I'm not going to pick it. So we have those two that in this one, you will record it on your spreadsheet. So let's get out of this, um, uh, this, um, sub-industry and go to the next. So you will scroll back up and you will click on the industry name and it will take you back to the sub-industry. So we'll click on the second one. It said 36 companies integrated telecommunication services. And we will scroll down and we will go to the, because we don't one those performances here, we will click on valuation to see the dividend and we'll click on the dividend to have from the high to the low. And orange SA, that's something I would say to avoid SA. SA usually is a foreign company. So I don't know if that's a limited or a corporation. For therefore, for that reason, I will avoid it. And and if sometimes when you, you put your mouse on it, it will tell you where it's selling. It's selling on the stock market. But the thing is, I don't know if SA is um, a company. I'm reading the, desk, the summary. It's saying that's a French-based multi-service telecommunication operator. So, yeah. I And let me give you another example to avoid. LTD. So LTD is limited. So let's put the mouse on it to see. Okay. So let me scroll down. The the, the business the business summary say limited is uh, like the PCCW limited is an investment holding company. So yeah, LTD is limited liability. Um, company type like LLC type or partner so and so another filter so we have two filters so far the dividend to find from high to low the second one is to avoid partnerships companies and the third one will be OTC pink that's over the counter so and if you do not know about the market is selling just here because you didn't click on that little window that's fine you will apply that filter later but because we are working in bulk you wanted to just see what you can recall from this page you are going to eliminate limited and the reason why i do not recommend limited companies you'll get schedule a from them when you get schedule a from llc's you use that to file with your 1040. 
And a lot of time you'll get it late. So, but you have to wait for those uh, ten, uh, schedule K to file your 1040 and and then you will report things on your 1040 that is on it. Usually those partnership companies, they pay high dividend because the company itself does not pay taxes. They flow that to the investors, to the partners. So, and then if you are doing that on in the rough IRA, you will think at rough IRA, you won't pay tax, but if you are investing in stocks from companies that are partnership, the brokerage firm will file a form from you, and I believe it's 990T. I don't recall well, they will file it for you. So you will get scheduled K1, you will mail it to the brokerage firm, and the brokerage firm will file a tax return for your rough IRA for that stocks. They will file it to IRS. So, and when you are doing in your brokerage account, when you get that schedule K1, you will use it to file with your 1040. If you are doing in your, if you have that company in your brokerage account, so it's just more of a hassle, and it can cost you money. One example will be, was it last year, uh, two years ago, that I have one company in my Roth IRA never pay me a dividend that I can recall. They, uh, it's, I think that's something I purchased to resell, but then, like I said before, I just left it there and it went down and then filed bankruptcy during 2020 and they sent me a Schedule K-1 that I needed to send to, the brokerage, to my brokerage firm. So I sent it and the brokerage firm filed a tax return and I owe $2,000 on that company that went to pretty much zero in the account, filed bankruptcy, never paid me a dividend before and reported that I have a profit that I had to pay tax on up to $2,000 and I had to sell some share to get enough cash available in that of IRA for uh, the brokerage firm to pull the money and pay tax on. So that's something to keep on, uh, to keep in mind. And it was done late as well. So when they file the tax return, they assess the fee on it. And with the fee, the penalty for, for filing a late, all of that total to 2000. And I had to actually call them to remind them to to pay that tax liability to IRS since the money was not available really in cash. They didn't pull it right away and I had to sell stocks. I had to call them once or twice before they actually moved the money. So yeah, even though LLC companies will have high dividend, I, I suggest you avoid them. So ASA, I will avoid. So INC, I can understand it. So, so you can see that even though some of them have high dividend, we are eliminating them. They are not going to go on our spreadsheets. So you will see that so far, the first three, the first four, no. And the next one is Verizon. So that's a company, that's a, a corporation. IS, INC, they are paying 6.53%. You add it to your spreadsheet. The following one is BCE. So pretty much Verizon, you'll put Verizon name, you put the symbol, that's the, the company stock symbol. You'll put the price they are selling now, you'll put the dividend yield that it has at the time you are watching it. Or you put that on your spreadsheet. So, and then the next one, 5.82, I think that's good. BCE, INC, you'll add it to your spreadsheet. The next one is AT&T, 5.77%. That's great. You'll add it to your spreadsheet. Let's go. So, we have the next one is NLTD. So, we are not even going to take a look at it. We'll leave it alone. The following one is 5.10%. is KT Corp. Yeah, that's a corporation. You will add it to your spreadsheet. So, and then we have another corp 
4.86, I think that's good. So I'll have to say that compared to the previous sub industrial this sub this industrial this sub industrial has a lot of companies that are paying good dividend. So and then we have 4.342. So you can see that we started we found Verizon at 6.53, and then now we are in the 4%. So you have to ask yourself, yeah, well. Is it good for you? So in my opinion, I would say that's okay. But again, I don't know the name of this company. That's just too long. And I will I will avoid it. AJ, I will avoid it. I will say that's another international uh, entity name that I won't know if that's a corporation or a limited. Therefore, I will leave it alone. I have a limited here. I will leave it alone. I have an essay here that will tell me that's a, an international company. And if you don't know that's a corporation or a limited, you leave it alone. If it talks to you, you can read it. So, but again, it does not tell me if that's a limited or not. So I'm not going to do anything with it. But again, it's up to you. And, and then we have uh, another AG here that I'm not going to, AG here that I'm not going to do anything with. We have PT, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not going to do anything. LTD, no. SA, no. INC, okay, but 3.26%. I don't know, you can, Add it to it to see if 3% dividend, if that's good enough for you. So you can see the point. So 2%, I would say that's a no no, unless it's a big company that you know that you are fan of. Let's say that Johnson & Johnson is one of the companies that I like. I think they have been around for a while and they will be around for a while. So if Johnson & Johnson is paying 2%, but I feel like I want to have Johnson & Johnson share, uh, you know, in my portfolio, I will add it to it. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can make those decisions, but it should not be the way you make all your decisions. But yeah, there are some companies, Abbott, Pfizer, uh, Johnson & Johnson, you know, those type of key companies that you are aware of that you say, you know what, this is a good company, you know, I like to have it in my portfolio and if they don't pay me a good dividend you know they they show growth I can sell them later Jared how can we go away good job and you make sure you keep your voice down okay I'm recording thank you turn the light off in the basement so yeah you know you can add those but it's not going to be the, the the reason for this company that we don't know. You know, I say that I'm not talking about getting to know the company, what they do and all that. I don't use that to select my companies. And some might do it, but it's not what I, I, I don't do that. I just use a simplistic approach with my stock investment strategy. So I'm just sharing the way I do it. Well, yeah, you have to choose a strategy that works for you. And we are not even close to invest in any of those stocks again yet. We are going to apply more filters to them. So now, at least you will set a limit. Anything below 3%, you can say that's no, no. Unless it's a key company that you are fond of that you want to have few share of. But you know that it's not what is going to make you the streams of income you are looking for, but you think that's a good company to have there. You know, at some point you can sell it. Okay. So once you set that limit to yourself, once you reach that limit, you don't worry about anything that is beyond that that is below it. And the next page is not going to be any better. But why not? Let's click on it. So as you can see, and this one, I don't know why it was at the, yeah, on the second page, but again, it's an essay that we are not going to. So it's worth checking the page just in case one didn't make it to the order. I'm not sure why, but 
So now we are done with this. So you just keep repeating that. Now that we are done with that, we we'll click on that sub, that industry again, and we went through those two. So you scroll back up and you go to the sector. And we know that that sector has multiple industries in it. So that means you went through the first one. Did we? Yes. And check the and we went to the two sub industries and record those companies there. Then you will click on the next one and you will proceed again. So when you have time, since that you recorded on your spreadsheet, let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay. So when you record those on your on your um, spreadsheet, we are going to hide. the other filters that we have. Okay, so now you are going to take those companies that you um, you recorded, you filter them, taking the LLC partners out, taking low dividend stocks out, and putting on your spreadsheet the corporation companies that pay you good dividend that you like. So now we are going to apply the next filter. So we are going to take, for instance, we are going to take this L U M N. So we are going to go back to the, if you are doing another day, you will log in. So if you are just doing it right away, so you will go back to um, research. I'm not even sure we need to, um, move out of here. Let's just try and put the symbol here L U M N. Usually it will show you the company and you click on it. So when you click, let's see what will show. Okay, it's showing it to us in the classic view as well. But, okay, let's see. Yeah, I'll have preferred the modern view for it, but that's fine. So, now that we search this, and in the classy view, what I like about the classy view, the, the industry will be a link that can take you back to the set or list. So, uh, so you we search that lumen technology. Now you can record the market is selling on. If that's OTC pink, I will suggest you apply that filter and let that company go. There are some you might make exception to see if you can hold on to it to to I mean to to buy few share, but it should be an exception. You don't make you don't leave a lot of those over the counter. They are new companies selling over the company uh, over the counter. A lot of times there will be penny stocks, so they will be risky. So you do not want your portfolio to be full of those. So you record the market. So that's another filter. OTC Pink, you eliminate that stock out of the list. So it's going to be on your spreadsheet, but you just you just don't go through the, the remaining filter with that company. So this one is New York Exchange, Exchange Stock Exchange Market. So you will put that on your spreadsheet. And I believe we already have that. For some, I didn't, but we have that there. And now you will scroll and you will find the 52 weeks range. So it will have it here for you. That means within the 52 weeks period, within one year, like it, it went to $4.96 at some point and it went to $12.93 at some point. So you want to put that on your spreadsheet. You want to put that on your spreadsheet. And that is a factor that will come into play when you want to buy something, when you want to buy the stock. You are going to compare how much is selling now, that's the last price, when the market was open 
that's how much it was selling five dollars twenty two or when the market closed that's what the price was you will compare it to four dollar ninety six and twelve dollar ninety three to see if that five dollar twenty two is closer to the fifty two weeks old or to the fifty two weeks to the fifty two weeks low or to the to uh, to the 52 weeks high price. So you notice that $5.22 is close to $4.96. Therefore, if you want to purchase that stocks, you will be able to purchase it now. Does that make sense? But we are not at that stage to decide to purchase the stock yet. So the price, the 52 weeks range low and high is a decision factor to determine whether it is the right time to place an order. But before that, we need another factor to see if that company is a good one. And that will be the chart. So we are going to apply the chart filter. So that Lumen um, company passed multiple filters for us. It pays high dividend, is a corporation, is selling in a New York stock exchange or NAGSA. You want those two. So it's the new is is it's on New York Stock Exchange, and now we are going to look at the chart to see the trend and how old the company is since it went public how many years ago. So I'm looking for Max, and for some reason I'm not okay. Let's go to chart here. So that this, you know, the few, the one year chart that they show is now a decision factor for us. We want the chart that will show us. Um, and that chart usually will show you the year that company went public. So you will scroll down. And you can see we were on the summary page before. Now we went to the chart. So we'll scroll down and you can see the company. So we have two filters here. How old the company is since it went public? So it was since 1990 so that's good so you will put that on your spreadsheet now you look at the chart and you will name the trend so this one i look at it i would say is growth and deep so uh but let's see and I didn't even name this one, but you can you can have some terminology for the trend of the chart that you can use to rate your company yourself. So we'll put growth and dip. So that means it's growing, it's going up and down, up and down type of company. But you notice that you notice that it has not really gone as low as when it went public does that make sense but it has been higher before and now is on the low side and it has been around since 1980 so frankly a chart like this is not a, a good indication for me to buy that stocks but with everything good about the stocks you can buy it with the assumption that you can buy it low and you can sell it. But while you are holding on to it, it will be paying you dividend. Does that make sense? Okay. And the fact that it has been around since 1980, that is a very big fact, decision factor on which stock I will invest in. So you will put found a year in fact, it will be more when it went public. So I would think so. We will put 1980. I think that growth is growth and deep. And 
If you like the company, you can put a note next to it. Not I didn't put anything there, but I wanted to buy some of it. So, but you can put a note by, or you can just make that line red, for instance, because you have other things on the spreadsheet that are stocks that you are not interested in. They, 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 they didn't pass all your filters. The one that pass your filters, you can make them stand out so that later on when you go into invest, you just click on the symbol to see, to compare the price to their 52 weeks low and high. Now, Gabrielle, I'm recording. I'll come your hair later. You can start using your computer. So... You, so you can compare the price at that point that you are ready to invest some money. You can compare the price that the the the, the stock is selling to its low and high at that point, 52 weeks low and high, to see if the price is on the low side or is on the high side. And if that's the right time to invest in that company, and if the price is on the high side, then you leave that company alone and you scroll down on your spreadsheet again to find the next company that is on your list to invest in. And you compare the price to its 52 weeks and 52 is 52 weeks low and high to see where the price is. On in that range to see if that's the right time to buy or not. So the 52 weeks low and high that will change if you from like if a week later from today i want to invest in a stock that 52 weeks range low and high will change so i'm not going to go with what is on my spreadsheet but i'll and the price will change as well so i'll go with what the brokerage firm has at that point to see if that's you can see for instance for lumen and back in March, I have ten dollars fifty-two, and I have nine thirty-one for the lowest price back then to fifteen forty-five. But at this point, you notice that it's five dollar twenty-two, and the fifty-two weeks low was four dollar ninety-six, and the fifty-two weeks high was thirteen or something like that. So, yeah. That's those that the the fifty two weeks low and high factor will come into play when you are ready to buy the stocks to see that's the right time or not. It does not mean the stock is a bad stock. It just mean if it's on the high point, it's not the right time to buy the stock. You want to buy when it's on the low side. That way. If it goes down, if you buy money is on the high side, if it goes down, you lose money. Of course, you didn't sell it; it's not realized loss, but but still, you know. So, okay, so now we went through pretty much all our factors here, and we think this company is a good one to have some, but it's not the best. So let's find another example here. We did come across this one, so let's go check it. I believe so. What you can do is just copy the 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 stock, and let's go to let's put it here. Sometimes I will go just going through the charts because I know that um, there is other decision that the fifty two weeks low and high. Even where the chart is, I don't need to, to go through the summary, but sometimes you can pull it back to the summary. But, but then we'll click on the chart. And the modern view, if you are on the chart search, uh, page, it will stay there. So and then I'll go to a bunch of them comparing their chart. So you will notice that we filter the dividend stocks that are in a partnership to we put them on our spreadsheet, and now we are checking them one by one using the chart to see if that's a good company because the chart will have the year that they went public. So this one, 
it went public in 2003 and to me that's a young company and I will say for this chart I will say that's upward but I have seen better and I will yeah you can say upward or you can say growth and deep and and pretty much you you want the chart to have an oblique going up down from down going up uh, layout oblique so I will say upward and that is a winner to buy this one ha has that layout but still I'm seeing quite a bit of growth and deep between even though it's going linear if that's the right terminology but yeah in 2023 I don't know what do you think for me is I don't know so it's just those things that you have to <laughs> use your gut feeling I would say so I put 2023 there and and it's just those things that when I don't I don't know where I, how I will place it, I'll look at the beta. And pretty much what the beta is, let's see if the beta will be on that page. I don't use it as a filter per se, but I do pay attention to it sometimes as the last result. And the pretty much what the beta is, And you'll find it here. So beta 0 0.39. So we have the zero. Anything above zero, anything above zero is going, anything above zero going away from zero is when the economy is good, the company is good. When the economy is bad, the company is bad. Like the stock will go down. So the further away is from that zero, let's say one, for instance, like Lumen, I put one there. When the economy is good, it's going to be very good. The stock will go well up. And when the economy is bad, the stock will go well down. So when the beta is negative, it will do the opposite. So when the economy is good, the stock will go down. When the economy is bad, the stock will go up. So the further away it is down, away from zero, the, the higher you will see that impact of the economy negatively affecting the stocks, if it makes sense. So, so it's not something that I apply as a field it's just those things that you know when you are doing it for 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 a period of time yeah you, it just become a second nature things you know you just do it without thinking about it but now that i'm trying to pull word to it it's kind of hard to explain it but yeah so but this company i don't know is there having a few share of it it doesn't hurt, but again, it's not my go-to. So we have another one here, BCE. Let's use it as an example and see what it is. So 2023 is young. So that is a decision factor for me. I don't like those young companies. I don't have anything against it. I just feel like it's too young for me to... Investing is a long-term thing. So 1980, and I say, yes, that's a company. I think it has been around for a while, it's going to be there. But young com company, 2023, and I said, I don't know. But, okay. So let's write BCE and see what we can find out. So, and when you have all those sectors to go through, all those industries and all those sub-industries, you want to be... Um, you don't want to go soft on your selection. You want to apply a hard filter to those stocks that you list down. So 2023, you don't have to invest in it because you have not gone through the whole list yet. Like you can end up with 200 stocks good to invest in. So you don't want to just 
start investing your money on some that later you say, you know what, maybe I shouldn't have invested in this because I have found better elsewhere. You see what I'm talking about in another sector. So you don't need to wait until you go through all the list to start investing. When you come up a good one, at least buy one share of it so that you have it there. That way, at least it's already in your account. And, and then when it's going up or when it's going down, you know that, oh, this is on the low side. I need to buy more at this point. Does that make sense? You don't even need to go back to your spreadsheet to see those because you you buy one, one of those to hold on to them. Okay, so we have BCE. It seems to be a Canadian company, but selling on the New York Stock Exchange. And, okay, you put that on your, web, on your spreadsheet. Let's take a look at the chart here. I mean, while we are here, why not? Uh, for the C70, that's why it's selling now. And the low, the lowest price was $39.88 and the highest price was $59.34. What do you think? I would say it's on the high side. It's not the right time to buy it yet. I don't know, it's somewhere in between the two. You can take those two numbers, the low and the high, divided by two to see where the average is. And compare that for the C70 to well. But yeah. The modern view will have a bar that will show you 52 weeks and 52 weeks low and high and will show you the dots on it, which means where the price is compared to that range. So that's a kind of good visualization as well. Okay, so let's with few seconds. Okay. Yeah, BCE is uh, the upward as well with grow with a uh, growth and deep as well. So it's just those that you have to put a term into that trend. But you can see clearly compared to the other one, even compared to uh, L U M N, I like this trend better. Because LMN went all the way down to five something now. But you can see this, it has that upward uh, oblique, but with some big jump and down. So, and 2008, those are big uh, markers that you can use as well. 2008. Nine, those are that's that was a recession period 2020. So you can see 2020 it went down. So during recession, when economy is down, it's down. 2021, it went up. That's 2022. Yeah, 2022, it went up. So but but it has not come down to you know how low it was in 1984. In 1984, uh, I mean, that's a good, that's a long time ago. So let's see. So 19, oh, I put 1980. So 1984. And you notice it, I put Canada there as well. I don't know if I recall the beta now, but I put a note there. And very good. Buy buy it when it's at when it's a little low. And I put that note there back in April. Let's go back to that chart again. Did you see that that peak? This peak here? Yeah, it was it was April. So when I was going through it, it was on the peak side. So yeah, you will put a note. You know, uh, that's, yeah, that's a good company to place an order of. And once you place an order on a company and you bought it, you can put another highlight on your spreadsheet so that it stands out for you that you already placed an order for that company. So the red mark could be that's a good one to buy and I put a green highlight to mark that it is bought or uh, another is placed for it so 
So you can just use different type of highlights on your spreadsheet so that it jump out for you the one you already placed an order for. But yeah, I didn't really put a name on that trade, but it is a good one. I like that it has been around for years and has not come down that low that it started with. It continued growing up, even though it's showing me those big jump, jump up and down between recessions, but it's going up, it's not going down. So I mean, it has not, and at no point it came back down to that as low as when it went public. So that's a good company in my opinion to invest in. So that's how I pretty much evaluate dividend stocks to select first to find the dividend stocks, to apply filter to to eliminate the one that won't make the cut and then refilter them again to select the good one that I believe I can put in my portfolio and they will be there for some years generating dividend income for me. And I know they are not going to go bankrupt anytime soon or uh, won't go bankrupt. That's why I'm a little bit hesitant putting 2003 stock in the mark, but sometimes I can buy few to keep an eye on it to see how it's going to do. So, but I know that I'm not going to add a lot of those in it. So, but when you have a long list you are going through, you're after a while you'll be so immersed in it that you will it'll be a little bit easier for you to to make decision if that's a good one for you to buy you make it in red or you make you make it in a color and just continue going down so i'm talking about so let's let's try at and here so And I'm not going to share how you will place an order. If you want to place an order for a company, you will click on trade. And by default, it will select a, an account that the money will come from. And if it's not the right account, you can change it from there. But And then the process will, I will explain the process later. But let's check the price for AT&T, 1923, 52 weeks range, we have 1443 to 2153. So I would say it's, it's close to high, might not be the right time to buy it. Let's see the chart, but it has good dividend. So it's good to have some in your portfolio. So why would you want to invest in dividend stocks? And I said before, to generate a stream of, a stream of income through stock investment. So if you keep your cost, let's say if you keep your living expenses low, which you should do, you want to ask, you are trying on our channel, we share different ways you can save money and different ways you can make money to reach your financial independence where you do not depend on your employer to provide for your need. So when you are trying to reach your financial independence, you want to have a good um, financial habit when it comes to your personal finances. At the same time, you are going to find different ways to generate income because if you are an employee, you are making money, trading your time. So you want to save money that you are making through your job and use that as a leverage 
to generate money where you do not truly come for money. And stock investment is one of that uh, stream of income source. And having your own business is another one as well. And having real estate is another way you can generate streams of income when you have rental properties. Having your business, when you have sales, the revenue, you have profits, you have streams of income from that as well. So, but while you are working on those three avenues, income avenues, you need to keep your expenses low. So when your expenses are low, let's assume that you pay off all your debts. You pay off all your debts and your living expenses are maybe just $1,000 a month. And another $1,000 you put in your saving for irregular expenses. And irregular expenses will include uh, paying uh, house insurance, paying your car insurance, uh, paying uh, uh, tuition registration for your kids, buying school clothing for them, and Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, and daughter checkups. So I'm talking about so and so yeah, those type of um, car insurance, you know. So those type of expenses that you do not pay for every month, but you pay for a few times during the year. And how maintenance, like if you call a plumber to come and fix a pipe that is clogged and things like that, or you go to Home Depot and buy a faucet to replace a faucet, those type of expenses, irregular expenses is what I call them. So if you put 1,000, you total how much you think that will be a year divided by 12, and it's 1,000, and you save 1,000, a month for those type of irregular expenses and your monthly living expenses is $1,000, the budget. So that's $2,000. So now you'll ask yourself $2,000. So you are making, maybe let's say you are making $3,000 from your, for, for a month from your job. So $2,000 is what uh, your expenses are. So $1,000 living expenses, $1,000 put in the saving for irregular expenses. So $2,000 a month, you want to generate streams of incomes. So if you are having a business on the side, you want your business to be able to pay you about $2,000 a month. That way, it will, that will replace the income from your job. Does that make sense? So when you have your expenses low, for your streams of income that you are creating, for that to be able to provide for your need, it is easier, faster than for that income to reach the income you are making from your job. Does that make sense? So now let's take that $2,000 that you need every month and say, you know what? I wanted to have, I want to invest in the stock market for some years, maybe for 10 years. And and then have dividend coming out of those stocks. When I'm ready, I can just turn those reinvestment button off and those dividends, when they pay, it will just be cash in my account. And I want that dividend to be $2,000 a month. You can be choose maybe $1,000. That way, another source of income will generate another $1,000. And then another, and another source of income will generate another $1,000. So $3,000 coming from three different sources together, and you only need $2,000, yeah, well, you have another $1,000 you can allocate to all your wants, and then donation, you know, for people in need to help others. So, so you can do it that way as well, or you can choose every single one of those sources to bring $2,000 a month for you. So, now let's take that stream of income from stock. Stock. So you can trade stocks. You have to be actively doing it, or you can choose dividend stocks, or you can do a combination of both. So what? So this one is just dividend stock. So dividend stock. How much do you need to invest in those dividend stock, and at what dividend yield that will generate? $2,000 a month for you. Does that make sense? So let's take our calculator here. 
and we are going to say okay two thousand dollars a month times twelve that's twenty four thousand so two thousand dollars a month times twelve that's twenty four thousand dollars a year so twenty four thousand dollars a year is what you need for your living expenses how much should you invest in dividend stocks to be able to generate $24,000 a year? You need to choose a rate that the dividend, the stock, the company will pay you as a dividend rate, annual rate. So let's use 3%. Why not? So you will take that $24,000 divided by 3%, 0.03. So that means you need to have $800,000 invested in those dividend stocks to generate $24,000 a year. So let's take that $24,000 again, and let's do it with 4%. Uh-oh. Okay, let's take that $24,000 again, divided by 0.04, 4%. So you need $600,000 invested. So you can see that from 3% to 4%, the difference is $200,000. So let's use 5% because we have seen Verizon, you have seen AT&T. They are paying more than 5%. So let's take that $24,000 annual living expenses that cover everything divided by 0.05. $480,000. Okay. So let's use, the other one was $600,000, right? Let's use that one, $24,000 divided by 0.04, $600,000. Yes, use $600,000. You need $600,000 invested in dividend stocks to generate $24,000 a year. You think $6,000 is a lot of money. Yes, it is. But you notice that when people say to reach financial independence or people investing in Roth I, uh, 401k, people target $1 million. They want to have $1 million, and when they have $1 million, they think they have enough they can live on. But those assumptions, I think it comes with, I think those um, estimates comes with the assumption that you will spend that money into the, you will spend into the principal. Does that make sense? You will carry into the principal. So you will spend to zero dollars. Oh, if they hope there is a way to do it so that you do not go to zero dollars. So seeing the market and see how much you need to take out every month. But this one is not even one million dollars, it's six hundred thousand dollars. And the five percent was four hundred eighty thousand dollars, less than half a million. So the one reason is because the expenses were kept low and the, the second reason is because we are not thinking about using the money all the way to zero, but we want to have the capital there and have streams of income coming out of it. So having $600,000 makes you financially independent already when you have $24,000 coming out of there as a dividend. So $600,000, you're not going to have it there in one year necessarily. So let's say you set a goal that within 10 years, you'll be able to save enough to reach that goal. So you want to set 10, uh, 10 year goal. So you divide that $600,000 divided by 10, so that means in a year, you need to invest $60,000. So you take that CC divided by 12. That means every month, you need to invest $5,000. Does that make sense? So you can do it that way. So you know that with 5%, no, with 4% dividend yield, you need to invest $5,000 to reach that $600,000 in 10 years. But the thing is you are going to reach it faster because you are reinvesting the dividend back back when you are purchasing the stocks. You don't you are not touching the money. So that means those reinvestments of dividend will buy more share for you. And and when the stocks goes down, your money will buy more share and 
when the stocks is high, you know, you'll have appreciation there. So that is things to keep in mind, but we eliminate those factors to keep it simple. So when we take that for $80,000, when you divide it by 10 year is 48,000. When you divide it by 12, you need to invest 4,000 a month. Does that make sense? So, and that's 5% dividend. So you can use that as a benchmark when you are looking for stock to say, you know what, 5% dividend uh, is going in it. 4% is going in it. 3% not so much. I might buy some few 3% when I like the companies very much, but I want companies that pay me more than 5%. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you can do it like that as well. So, and when you have $600,000 invested, well, that is 24000 coming out of that when you decide not to reinvest those stocks after 10 years, for instance, or when you are ready to tap into it, you just turn up. It's just a button in your investment account. And let me see if I can find an example here. Uh, let me see those little videos here. So is is a button in your account that you will is reinvest? Say yes, yes. So when you check it, it will say no. When you check it, it will say yes. So when you say yes, it's going to reinvest the dividend. So I don't buy cents of share. So when you have cents of share, that means they pay dividend at some point and got added to it. So and when you turn those yes, yes to no, next time they pay you dividend, it's going to be cash. You just scroll down at the bottom of the socks. You'll have the checking side, the cash side of your account, and it'll show you the money there. And you can transfer it to your local checking account if you want. But those brokerage accounts, they comes with um, checking account as well. But yeah, so... You yeah, and you know that you have six hundred thousand dollars, but you have it can it can provide for your needs. Does that make sense? And then you are working on investing in real estate or having your side business that will generate some money as well. And you can try to trade stocks. You buy low the stocks, and then when it goes high, you sell it to make a profit. Let's go back to that example. I don't know if I'll, yeah. The second stock on the line is a stock we purchased to trade. So it was my husband idea and I'm okay with it. He's been trading that stocks for some years now. He used to do it in his Roth IRA and he suggested, I said, you know what, that's fine. So you buy the stocks and when it's, um, when it's, it make you some profit, you can sell it and get out of it. So and it's a stock that do not pay dividend. So yeah, you can, the way you select those stocks that you want to trade are a little bit different. So now that we went side track of what we are doing to talk about the, the underlying goal of this purpose, now let's come back to at &T. So you can see that at and is up and down. So that's growth and tip here. So it's not up wall like that. BCE that we saw earlier. So, but again, it has not gone back to the low that it was before. And it went, the, 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 the oldest year we have here is 1984. So it is a company to invest in. It's paying goods dividend. Uh, I don't care about those up and down tendency that it has. But it has been around for a while and it's been gross dividend. Therefore, it's going to be around. 
and it's a company we know about as well. So, yeah, is I, I, I uh, frankly, if I wanted to read a chart, I will put growth and dip here. So, and so forth. So let's see if we can find a company. Let's I put down world trend for this one. So let's let's get it. Let's take a look at it to see what trend is that one for me to put that. Um, downward trend because you do not want to lose your money does that make sense you want to prevent pres preserve your capital so what i like about dividend stock is while they have my money they are paying me something on it so when you invest in stocks that do not pay dividend with the intention that over time it will go in a price that you will sell it it's like having an investment real estate that you are not renting out so like your house for example uh any investment property that you have or you that you have not rented out is is going to increase in value over time but your money will be there you know until you sell it to get that gain so when you invest in those growth companies they are increasing in value but your money is there, it's not generating anything for you until you sell it. So that's why I prefer dividend stock. If I'm going to invest in a stock, I want that stock to be generating revenue for dividend for me. Otherwise, it's a stock that I'm investing in with the intention that I'm going to sell it and I'm going to sell it quickly and make a profit on. Therefore, I'm buying a low. And it is a cyclical type of company. It's like a seasonal type of company that some part of the year it goes up, some part of the year it goes down. So I'm buying the one is down, the one is go up. I'm going to sell it and make a profit. So it's trading, speculating. So do you see this company, KT? So it went public at a higher price and now it's on the low one. So it's done well. And this company it started in 2020. So it's not in, in 2000. So it's not a company, even though it has been around for 22 years, it's not a company that I want to invest in. So therefore, it won't make the car, but it's just my opinion. So I put down wall to it, and I'm, I, I'm just not going to make a note next to those companies that I'm not interested in. I will leave them on the spreadsheet, and I'll just move to the next one. So let's see. And I have another downward there. So let's see one here that say upward. And you see, I put a note here by. So is OMC. Let's take a look at it to see what is special about it. And now that we went through the goal of the rating stream of income from your stocks by knowing your living your monthly budget first, time it by try to find the annual and see how you might need to invest to be able to generate enough to dividend stock to afford your living expenses. You will notice it that now it will guide you to decide which kind of dividend yield you will aim for when you are selecting dividend stock. Dividend stock, usually they don't, it's not that they are paying you a lot of dividend, but it's still better than having money in CDs, um, money market or at the bank. The worst one is the bank. But yeah, this one is upward. And yeah, I have seen this trend before with a few others that we went through, but you can see it has those big up and down, but it still, it has that upward trend. And it has been around since 1980, which is great. Started very low and it's still going great, even though it's having big dip up and down, you know, it's still going great. So it's a company that, now, that's a company that we like, we want to buy. But it, again, is it the right time to buy it? So you go back 
and and you look at how much is selling eighty three seventy eight, how much has been. Let's see if we can find the low and high here. We are not seeing it. Let's go to summary. So how much is the lowest price and how much is the highest price uh, for uh, the fifty two weeks? So. 8378, the lowest price was 6131, and the highest price is 9161. I would say it's too close to the highest price. It's not the right time to buy, but that's a good company to invest in. So, therefore, it's a good company to, to invest in its stocks, but it's not the right time to buy because it's on the high side. So, that's how you will do your, you know, your um, evaluation. And here I have level. Let's take a look at it and see why I put level there for that company. And when you go through all the sectors and you invest in companies in all the sectors, you will be diversified. So it's pretty much having your own mutual fund. But again, there are stocks when you want to sell, you'll be able to sell it. The things between individual stock and index funds is index fund, you have to actually sell a share to be able to access the money. Stocks. You can have the dividend when you turn it off. You'll have the cash in your account, and you can sell it easily as well. And you have the ETF. ETF is like index fund, but it trades like stock, so you can you can sell it easily as well. And this one is on Nasdaq market. It's in the media as well. And while it's working, we can scroll and see another upward. Yeah, we can try this upward and see how it looks like. Okay, I pull level because, yeah, um, it, it, you can still say, say growth and deep, deep as well. That would work. I just feel like it does not have much difference. When there is not much difference in the way they are fluctuating throughout the year, it's pretty much level. You can say that. But, and when it started, 1996. Uh, yeah, I just feel like, you know, from where it's, it went public, from where it's now, but it's the same, but it's not. You know, they were pretty much, yeah, not really um, too low, not really too high most of the time. And in 2020, it went down. 2020, it went down. 2018, I'm not sure why. 2019, it went really up. I'm not sure why. So, but anyway. Yeah, it's not a company I would invest in. So it didn't have any. Which one were you working on? It didn't have any chain there, even though I have it on the spreadsheet. So let's try this one to see. Some of them can have a very good. I think I remember one company that we can check to see an example of upward trend. Some of them can be really steep. Uh oh, it's not what I should have put here. I should have copied the symbol. Yeah, so you see now. So try the symbol. That's why you need to have the symbol because Eva is the symbol. EVA. And then you choose the company in the list.
and we are going to go to the chart and you'll notice it that oh now it went it took me back to the to the modern view okay so to the modern view you can see uh, is the price is 46 45 it, we left the classic view to the modern view so it's showing you where the 52 weeks range 43 cc 9106 and it's showing you that it's close to 43 cc which is true 46 close to 43 compared to 91 and notes on on this if you want to trade stocks like buy stocks low and sell high this company will be a good one too because of the range we are not talking about trading stock but let's point it out here Com when you are selecting company to trade like to make quick money on you want those company that will have a big range 52 weeks low and high when it's wide like this and you buy it low there is a chance that it will go high at some point too even if it doesn't reach this highest price point it will go high enough for you that you will sell it for a profit if you buy it low enough it's not the only factor you will use though but i simplify my fact my different factors even when i'm buying stocks to resell i don't never read it too much so but for those type of trading, using the short-term chart might be a good one as well to see, you know, if there is a chance it will continue to go down because of the way the chart is going. I might say, well, it might go down. Maybe I should not buy a year or yet or set a lower price so that if it reach that price, it will be, the firm will buy it for me. So, but I'm not buying it with, to trade on it. Therefore, I'm not going to use short term chart to make my decision. I prefer the long chart, the many year chart to use. So, now, okay, so. That's enough word. Is 2015 is young, but again, I don't know. I don't know. So, and yeah, I don't know. Is is young, but well, you can buy few. Let me see if I have some notes here. I didn't make any notes there either. And it's in the energy. 2015, you can see it here. Oh, my spreadsheet is acting up, but you know, yeah. So let's try Chloros, for instance. Chloros could give us uh, the CL Chloros. Colgate is a good one we can look as well, but let's try Chloros. Yeah, that's this one. CLX is the symbol. So, Chloros, well, they have been around. So, 142.56 is the price. It fluctuates between 120.50 and 182.34. So, it's kind of half point. I don't know if you buy at 120 or 125 at 142 now you could sell it for the profit but anyway so let's go to the um detail you can go back and check chloros may not pay you a lot of dividend but it could be a good one to have in your in your portfolio because you know that it will be around for a while does that make sense it has been around since 1980 and, and you can see the chart. That's what I'm calling upward chart. And that is what you are looking for. Those are the first companies that will make a car if they they make your dividend, your dividend, um, your dividend filter. If they made a car through your dividend filter, when you are applying the chart filter to it, those are the first one to make your car. So this one. 
we are not even going to talk about the dividend, but let's assume that's a good dividend. That is one that you will pull next word by when it is low because it has been around since 1980 and it has that growth going on throughout the year showing up as well. Therefore, that's a good one that should be in the portfolio. So let's go back to um, when you're in the modern view, when you click on that, those two arrows, it should take you back to the summary. So we can, in the modern view, you'll scroll down to check the dividend. And if we see the beta, we can, the beta is 0 0.31, it's close to zero. So yeah, it, but it's positive and close to zero. So when the company is, when the economy is good, it's good. When the economy is down, it'll be down, but not too drastically. When it's close to zero, when the beta is close to zero, the, 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 com, the, the company prices, the, the stock prices does not fluctuate widely. Does that make sense? So at least that's my opinion. So we are still going down to look for the dividend. 3.31%. So it's not great. But again, for that growth going, at least if some years you wanted to sell it, you could sell it for a profit. Does that make sense? And, and while your money is sitting there, you'll have some 3% dividend paying on it and dividend a share is a dollar 18 for every quarter so yeah that is and the dividend amount can differ based on the price but that is in a brief <laughs> how you can find dividend stocks to invest in. And once you find them, how you will apply your own filters to how you will screen the companies, the stocks, to narrow down to the one you really like that you want to invest in when their price is on the low side. And, and please, if that's something you are interested in, I could continue making videos on how to find those dividend stocks and we will evaluate them the way we did. We can do that times to times. And let me know in the comments if that's a topic you are interested in interested in so we share different ways you can save money and different ways you can make money to reach your financial independence that's what our blog and our youtube channel are about and we pretty much use how we are proceeding to reach our financial independence we what we can we all can learn from it we use that to to share on our channel so yeah, and it is a part of things that I intend to talk about. I just don't know if that's something you're interested in or not. And investing in the stock market should not be a scary thing for you. You have to understand that if you keep your money at the bank, it's not going to generate enough revenue for you. It's not going to grow. It's not going to generate a lot of interest to um, to protect it from inflation. So you have to invest in the stock market if you can. In this fund is great, but again, the firm choose the stocks in that index. And if you like an index fund, what I like to do is you can click on that index fund, and some of them will show you the top ten best companies they have. And you can click on and you can go search those company stocks to see how they are doing and add them to your list if you like them. That's one way to proceed as well. But again, I'll show you how you can access those sectors and screen through the industries and sub-industries and find those companies. And that's a long list to go through. It'll take you a while, but you will do it. And 
you know and then you have your list and when you have time you just go through them once you know uh let's see this one once you know uh you have you went to all your list and you have the list of companies you want to invest in now you just come and sit down and go through them again and see which one is on the low price for you to invest in and every month make sure you keep your uh, your expect have a budget have monthly budget for yourself and when you get paid sit down with your spouse if you have a spouse and then go to your finances and see how much you need to leave on in your checking account to account for your living expense how much you need to put in your saving account to account for your irregular expense and how much you need to invest whether it's going to go to your own business or it's going to be split between your business and your investment and you invest it and then when you have time during the month you sit down and go to your stock investment spreadsheet go to those um, companies that you highlight that is good to invest in to see the price they are selling at that point the 52 weeks low and high to see that's the right time to buy them or not so that you can place an order and when you place an order you set the price you want to pay so when you reach that price the brokerage firm will buy it for you so you have this one enb is 41 dollars now and it's close to 47 dollars therefore it's not the right time to buy it. but we can click on or oh, before we do that we should have checked the the dividend is paying but let's go to the chart since we click on the chart already okay the 1986 yeah that's good it does have that oblique shape even though we have big wide uh growth and deep um lately it has not gone down to when it started so that's good so that's a good one to have and but again it must have passed a minimum dividend yield to be on the spreadsheet so let's double check the dividend here but we could have it on our spreadsheet and the dividend yield could be different as well based on the price how the price is fluctuating will affect the dividend so 6.34 that's a good one so it's more than five percent right did you even try six percent with our calculation let's try it again so if you have twenty four thousand dollars that you need a year divided by 0.06 percent that's four hundred thousand dollars you want to have in your in your investment to generate twenty four thousand dollars a year for you without you touching your four hundred thousand dollars so if the stock goes down or goes up they just pay you dividends so let's take that four hundred thousand dollars divided by ten so that's forty thousand dollars a year divided by twelve and that's three thousand 333 that you need to invest every month to reach that goal so even if that's just 1000 you can invest in that's hundred thousand hundred dollars you can invest it's okay to start with something so that you can see the momentum and you can get used to how to invest and when you are doing that you'll find ways to lower your expenses and i will say that prior years we have been investing in the stock market for some years but at some point we stop doing it and we just invest our um allowances my husband and i we took hundred dollars each every month for allowances and some of we will invest those in our rough IRA and we'll use that to trade because it's hundred dollars we'll buy more penny stocks so we will buy them over our if over the counter stock so they cost few dollars and then we'll buy uh, the stocks and we will hold on to it for a few months and when it goes up if double in price we will sell it so we make a lot of money doing that we, we lost a lot of money doing that too so yeah when you are trading stock it's very risky you make money you lose money but if you do it well you will make more than you lose when you look at 
not just in the short term, but for everything you have been doing, you notice that you make you made more money than you lost money. But and then you will continue growing and you just reinvest that money. Does that make sense? So and it can allow you to get family to familiar yourself with how um the stock market things how it works. So and and this is just if you are investing in your brokerage account. But you'll have in Charles Swap, you'll have both accounts, the rough and the broth. And the rough IRA, your own checking account, like inside the Charles Swap, the rough IRA and the brokerage account. And you can call them to help you if you, you know, if you have an issue um, creating those accounts. But yeah, and they can each send you a check-in, a checkbook as well. Fancy a checkbook with a fancy cover when you have a checking account with them that you put money in and then from there you put it to the rough or the brokerage account or things like that. So and I have used TD Ameritrade, used to be Scotch Scotch Trade and became TD Ameritrade. Uh, I have an account with them. I don't invest there anymore, but I still have the account. But I just found that they have a lot of information on their website, and it's not easy for me to find what I'm looking for compared to Charles Schwab website. So it's easier for me to invest in our Charles Schwab account more than our TD Ameritrade. I can find my way around Charles Schwab account. So I like them, but I have used both. When you are creating your brokerage account, use a good company. Not a company that will promise you a free stock or things like that. I mean, they could be a good company. I have not tried them. I won't say much about them. My concern is investment, stock investment, is not insured by the Fed. Therefore, if the company you are investing with is a shady company and they took your money, the Fed are not paying you back. It's not like the bank or the credit union that are insured. So when you have money at the bank, the bank, something happened to the bank, your money is insured, you will get it back, they will pay you. But when you have your money invested in the stock market, yeah, when the stock goes down, you lost your money, some stock bankrupt or loss, you know what we invest in them, we lost them. So yeah, you are not going to get that money back. Uh, it's just what they have a bank side of it. Like when we have cash in the account that we have not invested, it generates some interest better than the, you know, your local bank. But it's an investment company. I would assume the bank is insured, but still just know that it's good you find a reputable brokerage firm to invest with so that you know that your money is safe. So t row price is a good one as well, but t row price is good for index fund. I have in the, I have a rough IRA with them, but it's more, no. Why am I saying index fund? Mutual fund. And I think I have said that before. I have compared index fund to ETF as well. It's mutual fund I'm talking about. Okay. So I think I already did what I said before. Mutual fund is good to invest in. They choose the stocks for you. It's like a lot of stocks together in the mutual fund, but you have to sell a share to be able to assess the cash. They, or you, they call it exchange. When you want to move from one mutual fund to another or buy more share using money from another mutual fund that you have, it's just not flexible like if you are investing in individual stock. ETF is like a group of stocks as well, like mutual fund, but it trades like stocks. So it's, you can sell share of it easily. So mutual fund, t -row, I mean, trade no, t -row price is good for mutual fund. I think if you want to trade individual stock with them, it might cost you more. t -row, um Charge swap now does not charge fee when you buy or sell stock with them. Few years ago, they charge. 
at some point they lower the price. Now the price is zero dollars. Whether you buy one share or hundred share, whether you spend ten dollars to buy a share or you spend hundred dollars. So yeah, so I have so mutual fund when you invest in mutual fund. It can depend if you choose a good mutual fund, it can you can see growth quite a bit there as well. But I just feel like buying your own individual stock is a great way to invest as well. You choose the stocks yourself, you are the one in charge picking the stock. And when you have a lot of stocks and you buy them and you have them in your portfolio, you probably might have your own mutual fund, you know. So or your index fund or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, that's that. And I don't know if there is another thing I wanted to touch base on. I think that's pretty much it. I'm not going to show how to trade the stocks in this video, but it's not hard at all. So if you have come across a video, uh, a stocks that you know you want to trade, you just click on trade and it'll take you to the page that you choose whether you want, you want to buy or sell. If you have this stock, in your portfolio you have that option otherwise it's to buy so but it's not complicated at all so thank you so much for watching um afiavi libreman creators of libreman consulting llc youtube channel ninasoup.com our blog we have free templates at ninasoap.com and it will be in the description where you can access we have free downloads where you can access templates to manage your finances and your business successfully we do have our digital download store as well libredownload.com where we sell templates for your finances and your business as well and yeah try to have you can draft a spreadsheet to track your stocks and you can track the sectors and you'll track you know how much you are investing and because when you place an order a purchase order to buy a stock it may not go through right away so because if you set a limit price to pay and you choose a price that is lower than the price is selling you can set the timing for when for how long you want that purchase order to be active and if at some point during that time frame is the price goes low and reach that limit that you said the brokerage firm will buy the stock for you so when you are doing that you might want to track how much you have in the account how much um you are allocating for that purchase order so that you know you have enough to afford your order does that make sense so that your account does not go negative if three weeks a month later is a stock goes down and the firm bought it for you and you forgot about it and you place other orders and use up all your money so you don't want the account to go negative for you so you want it to um to place to you know to track your transactions and and pretty much you know um know how much you are locating for those purchase orders that has not gone through yet and when when uh, it, and um, those purchases go through then you can uh, go back to your account and record them as well but yeah you have a lot of sectors to go through to retrieve those companies and it is a fun project to work on if you like dividend stocks to find them like that and that's um yeah that's uh one way to generate income where you do not trade money if you want you do not trade your time for money so yeah it will take you time to go through those stocks and you know and you can see and 
narrow them down to to um, to the one that I go to invest in and the one that I now go to invest in <laughs> I call this not stable let's see why that is not stable but yeah and then this process just allows you to have all the stocks analyze have them in bulk there and when you have time you just go from there instead of going back and search them again but again the choice is yours if you if you like to go through one industry at a time and and do that i'm not why is not showing me the the um the let's click on five years is it is it is it not old enough but anyway i'm not seeing the big chart for this one but well i don't know i say it's not stable so <clears throat> Anyway, I'm not sure why. So, but yeah, and you you can just you can see that they all have different, you know, dividend yield, and you just some you might say, you know what, it might be good to add it, but then you ask yourself, do you really want to percent dividend in your things? I don't know. It's up to you if you want to trade on it. You know, you'll find it, but again, it's just those that you will, um, yeah, you know, the choice is your spot. Now you know how you will um, find those dividend stocks, how you'll apply dividend, uh, different screens to, to it, and then find the one that you are interested in. And, and, and once you invest in those companies, if there are other ones that you think they are good to add a few of those, you can, or you can now, <coughs> that's kind of weird, dividend, don't you think? And I put a note here, invest a little. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it might be a risky one, but yeah, well, it doesn't hurt to buy 2012, to buy few and <laughs> probably it'll double, <laughs> it'll double um, your money for you within few years if it doesn't go under by then. Yeah, well, it'll be one to to buy and now reinvest the money with the assumption of that you want to recoup your money before just in case because that's quite a high dividend um that we can take a look at it to see if it's still that high but anyway <laughs> but yeah it uh, it yeah you can just there is a lot, a lot of stocks to go through, and you know that there is so many that are just, even though they are paying high dividend, I put down what trend to them, and you know they are just too young to to pass that screen of mine, the child screen that I don't want to invest in does that make sense even though they are paying high dividend so and uh, some of them the chart is not even available because they are just that young so but again you um yeah some sector will pay quite a bit and yeah you just have to and this one i put winner to invest in it could be how the trend the the, the chart trend is so but yeah if you are not too tired we can put that one that has so much dividend to pay and see it's still on the low side it's selling for four dollars and the low is three cc 
the highest is 1272. So I'm not seeing the chart that will take me to, you know, that many years chart that we'll see more detail here. We'll click on it in the modern view. I'm not seeing it. So let's and this is ETF. So ETF that I talked about earlier is like mutual fund, but it trades it trades easily like stocks as well. And I have purchased ETF before and traded and sold them for the profits. And I don't have any ETF in my portfolio at the moment. I have few mutual fund, but I don't have ETF. But yeah. And you can see 163.93%. <laughs> so it continue paying. Interesting. It's paying a lot of dividend for four dollars. <laughs> well, I don't know how long it's going to take you to recoup that money if you traded and you just check to not reinvest my money and and you can do calculations to see. Let's say you have hundred dollars. How much they are spend? One ninety-three percent, one sixty-three percent. Unbelievable. And and those are risky companies, in my opinion, because you are investing for a long term. But when you come across those unusual companies that you don't mind spending hundred dollars on. Let's say hundred dollars times 0.16393. No, it's not even one, it's not even 0 0.63. It's like times 1.63393. Am I even doing it right? Let's just do it. 163.93 divided by 100. So if I'm right. When you invest hundred dollars, yeah, but it, yeah, that's how many share that hundred dollars. That's if you have hundred. Okay, so <laughs> let's make sure we are doing it right here. Okay, so the the price is four dollars something, right? How much they are? Eleven cents. They are paying you 11 cents. Oh, boy. <laughs> so let's go back up and check the price they are charging here $4.27. So if you have $100 divided by 4.27, you'll buy 23 share. Okay, so let's say you have 23 share. So 23 share will cost you 4.27, will cost you 98.21. So if you invest 98.21 times 163.93 divided by 100. So yeah, it was still correct, is it? I think so. So, so pretty much within a year, <laughs> you will earn more in dividend than you invested in that company. So, if you think that company will be around for at least a year, well, you can put some spare money in it and make sure you do not reinvest the dividend so that you can double your money, or at least not doubling it quite. 98 and 1 CC is close, but <laughs> yeah, don't use a lot of money. Uh, money that you do not want to lose, don't, don't, don't put them in those companies that are that risky. So play on the conservative side so that you can keep, you can preserve your capital while you are making some money on it. And remember, don't lose focus on your goal. You want to generate streams of income. So when you come up with those exceptions, yeah, you can treat a little bit with those, but don't lose focus on your main goal here and so that <laughs> you do not lose money that you don't in, you don't plan on losing by investing them in a, in a risky. 
uh, stock. So, and again, I don't know what that company is about, and I am not sure why is okay. Does that change already? I think it changed already. So we that's this one that eighteen dollars. It's close to sixteen dollars compared to twenty six dollars. So let's take a look at the. Okay, so I think my computer is tired because frankly I'm not looking at the full chart and I cannot make decision based on based on this. I want a chart that is, you know, like how far it can go. But anyway. I think the computer is telling me that it should be enough for the day. But anyway, based on our record here, 1980, it, it was the longest, the oldest date was 1980. And it has upward growth to the chart. And it's been 10%. So let's do our fund calculation again. If you need 24000 a year and you have an average dividend yield of 10, let's just say 10%. So let's take divided by 0.1. That's $240,000 you need to invest. So if you divide that by 10 years, that's 24000 a year. If you divide that by 12, that's $2,000 you need to invest a month for 10 years to get $240,000 in the account. If you invest it in dividends, stocks that pay around 10% a year. And with $240,000, you'll have $24,000 in average in dividend a year that you can use toward your expenses without even touching that $240,000 that you have. And for that 10 years that you have been investing to reach that $240,000, if you keep reinvest those, you just select reinvest dividend and instead of paying your cash, those dividends are purchasing more share of those stocks, you will notice say that that 240, you even reach it before 10 years. So, yeah, there are some companies that are paying high dividend. But again, have a measure of, of them across sectors so that when things are up and down, up and down, your whole account does not look negative. Like everything is now in the red. And it can happen. But again, you are not going to worried about it because you know that they are going to generate dividend for you one second you know that you apply half filter to those companies to select the one you have there so they are strong companies and those companies that pay good dividend a lot of time they are strong companies established companies old companies large companies so they they went to the growth um stage and they are stable does that make sense? So pretty much you want to invest in companies, large companies that are stable if you are looking for dividend stocks. So thank you so much for watching. And if you have questions, you can put them in the comment. And if I can answer them, I'll be happy to help. So <laughs> thank you. And thank you, you all that subscribe to our channel. We thank you very much. We thank you, you all that watch our videos. And we thank you for all your comments.